every game was close, we said. Like yeah. a one possession game, except for, as has been the trend here, our game on Sunday night, even though this was an awesome game. We got to see Brady. We got to see Mahomes. The Chiefs doing some magic stuff. Mahomes doing some magic things. They end up winning 41 to 31. It was crazy because the Bucks. one thing, we were like, well, that defense. They don't know how good the offense is. Defense has been the best in the NFL. They had given up, what, nine points per game, 27 yeah, phenomenal. all year. Right. Chiefs had 28 at halftime. So let's start with, with the quarterbacks. Yeah. Here. Because you look at the stats, right? Tom Brady, of mm. course, he was bringing his team back. And I they, like where you're going with they this. They barely though. ran at all. But you look right. at the stats; it's like he 385, three touchdowns, no interceptions. You're like, wow, Brady had the better game. Patrick Mahomes, though, he also had three touchdowns. What is it about Patrick Mahomes right now? Right. You know, the stats might not jump, although the stats are still fine. Right. 249 yards. Yeah. Three scores. What is it about Patrick Mahomes right now? Can you put your finger on what makes him so special? I, well, I mean, first off, the physical ability is crazy, right? I, we've never seen anybody as creative as throwing the football as Patrick Mahomes, you know, let alone being able to do that and then, of course, make every throw being creative as well or make the standard throw when it's just, hey, prototypical quarterback play. But, like, it, like I, I think you heard me talking last night and we were talking like it, it, it's hard to quantify. Like, even looking at the game, and I, I like where you're going here, just because I looked up in the second quarter and I was like, the, it's like, you look at the stats, and I'm paying, you know, I always got a stat thing showing on why I'm watching the game, and then I'm just going, well, Brady's stats are better. He's throwing for more yards, quarterback rating, but there's no fucking way he's the better quarterback in the field for the first two quarters of that game. It's like, it's, it's really hard to quantify the Mahomes magic. It really is. It just seems like in every got to have it moment, or got to have it play, he comes through. And even though it might not be, you know, a 40-yard or like surgical, 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 40-yard bomb, boom, 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 it's just like it gets done. And then it gets done with a degree of difficulty at times where you go, hey, that was a cool play, but nothing was open. But, damn, he just got it done as usual or made some play happen. So there's like a mixture of, wait, cool play, yeah, we can be surgical, but also like this like – it's not overly surgical, and then he can just make it happen that it, it's hard to really, yeah, put it into words at times. And I was saying this in the studio last night, like, you know, how do you put it into words? How do you do it? Like, I, I it, it's so hard to explain, like, where, yeah, his stats don't just fly off the page at you, but yet you're going, there's no doubt who the best player on the field is. So the stats aren't quantifying exactly – you know, his worth to the game or his worth to the Chiefs. And, yeah, he was phenomenal last uh, last night. He really was. And But th- here's my big thing with them. If they play like that right there, and you know them, like you know, we've talked about this a lot, they get an early turnover on the opening kickoff return. And I even said, like, right as it happened, I was like, uh-oh. This, the, I, I literally yelled out, I go, the Bucks are going to be down 21 nothing before they blink. Because this is just, that's that's the Chiefs. It's like we talk about the Golden State Warriors. They hit a few threes, and all of a sudden you look up and you go, they're up by 35. The game, they were down by two just a minute ago. They're they're unreal that way, but the game plan was impressive. The physicality was impressive. And then, of course, him added on to it is just insane. I don't know. Can you describe it? It's, like, try a wave to describe of, it. it's like a wave of momentum. It's like that offense. I think the Bills offense when Josh Allen is definitely like, like that. that. No Lamar doubt. When he's cooking the Dolphins for one quarter when they're playing the but Ravens But what defense. is it about the – like you, the statistics, yet we know he's the best player. Like, see, even like, even yeah. Allen goes through that too. Like yesterday, like Allen's stats don't jump off you. You're, you're right. Mahomes is to a greater aspect though of like, the stats don't look good, but you're like, he's definitely made the best plays on the field and has yeah. been the best player on the field. You've put it well. He's you think Steph, so? He's Steph Curry with a spiral. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's just like I think visually the way he makes it happen. Right. Right. Sidearm going underneath a defensive lineman's arm so right. it doesn't get batted down at the line of scrimmage. Right. We all saw the basketball touchdown throw. Yeah. To Clyde Edwards. The Ali Oop. You mean he threw from half court? Exactly. Right. I yeah. think visually he just right. has more ways. Yeah. Creatively. Right. And he's not the most athletic quarterback out there. He's very athletic. Yeah. I right. I got you. you look at, but he's you look not at the, Lamar. And he's not Lamar. Right. He's not Kyler Murray. Right. Right. But it just seems like the creativity, the way that he can move his body, he yeah. can get himself into into areas awkward that positions can make and plays. everything right it just it's visually unlike anyone in the game right now and anyone we've ever seen I think. yeah yeah I, th- I think you're right i think that's really what it is and it's 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 um it's addicting to watch you know uh, again as much as you know i love my homes and rogers and lamar and those that and justin herbert and burrow there's just a pizzazz about my homes when you watch them where you go this this shit is it's i'm not even i'm not even overstating it it's magical yeah it really is and um 
The, the, the Chiefs, I'm proud of the Chiefs. I mean, first off, I didn't think they could ever run the ball like that on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But then, you know, you heard me last week a little bit on the pod on the Wednesday, what the F happened pod, where I was just like, you know, get away from the run game a little bit. Let's just throw more screens. They did throw more screens last night. There's no doubt about that. That was part of their game plan. Juju had a big one. Right. Juju, Kelsey, down. there was a few right there. And it's not, again, I'm not looking for it. We're not looking for screens to be like home run breakers. We just want it. If they have a steady dose of it where they're getting five and six yards, they're going to start getting the coverages they want to then start the air show again and push the ball down the field. And we saw that a little last night too. I think there was a few plays where the Bucks finally were like, all right, we can't just play umbrella defense here. You know, they're running on us or they're throwing this ball short. We got to change it up. And then they strike for a, you know, a, a more aggressive play down the field. But man, the, the, that right there, I think shows you the potential of the Kansas city chiefs. I know that game fell their way in some ways and the Bucks didn't have their best night, but it just shows you that when the, the Chiefs are on their game, there's no doubt they're in the class of the best team in football and, and in that convo. Uh, Clyde Edwards, Elaire, 92 yards. Pacheco came in, the rookie, 63 yeah. yards. He looked pretty good. Yeah, I know I you're going to take a deeper look at this game probably on Wednesday. You're going to yeah. want to take a look at the film. Yep. So we won't spend too much time on it, but uh, this is an interesting question that came in from DSHSV99. Whoa. That's like a it's... top CIA clearance number right there. <laughs> yeah. Member of the FBI. <laughs> on the broadcast, he or she says, it looked like Andy Reid was calling all all the plays is he taking into uh, taking it into his own hands because Eric Bieniemy can't attack shell coverages. Ooh, very that's a, it's a great question. question. And, and and at DSHSV99, <laughs> I that's something I noticed during the game too. I had some NBC people before the game go, you know, who calls the plays? And I said, well, this year Bieniemy's been calling the plays. And then we started the game, and I went, I think Andy's calling the plays today. And then, of course, we showed another clip of him on NBC, and he was covering his mouth. I'm like, damn, Andy's calling the plays. So it, big games, Andy has been known to take over. Maybe he hasn't liked the total rhythm of the offense. Listen, I don't think the plays to our to our answer here to one of the homies or homets is that it, I don't think the plays change a whole lot. But you always hear me about great play callers have a feel for the other guy. They know how to tie the plays together, right? Hey, we threw a screen. A few plays later, we faked that screen and hit Marquez Valding up the sideline for a big play, right? Yeah. That's where I think Andy is. I, I, I hope, you know, nothing against Eric Bieniemy, but he has a little magic there. And they have a great committee, an, committee anyways, but it did seem like Andy Reid was calling the play. And then I think the other thing where I've just I've – ne- the Chiefs were so good at staying ahead of the chains last night. I mean, at one point, they were 9 for 11 on third downs. Maybe that's part of the Mahomes thing, too, where we just go, man, every third down, he just makes it happen. Some were, you know, smart, good tactical plays. The others were just like, what the f***? That was a great defense. How do you stop that? I don't know. And then the others were like, whoa, that's a cool play by Andy Reid. But I thought their ability to kind of stay in those manageable situations, you know, that, that was a big key, too, whether it was the run game or screen game to keep them in, you know, a lot of third and fours and things like that to where I don't give a shit who you are and what defense you got. You got Patrick Mahomes at third and four too many times. You can't stop that, yeah. you know, along with Andy Reid and the talent they have on their team. So that was that was impressive, let alone, you know, their defense was impressive too. Um, and, One thing, yeah. let's go to the Bucks offense. One thing with the Bucks here, their yeah. defense was impressive. Now, they got very pass-happy to the Bucks because they were down big early on. Yeah. You've mentioned Todd Bowles wants his team to be more of a running team. Exactly. So hated the game yesterday. No, did, no doubt. Leonard Fournette carried it three times for negative three yards. They only had three yards total as a team in rushing compared to the Chiefs' 189. Was it just a matter of the game got away from them early and they had to change the way they they had to revert back to Tom Brady from last year? I I, I think so. I think that's you know I think that game played out you know exactly the way they didn't want it to play out. Yeah. Should they have done that though? I mean, should they have tried to just still stay balanced? <sighs> it was it it was it was hard to just in the fact of it's 14 to three. Before we blink our eyes, and you know we gotta we gotta push the envelope a little here tonight because it seems like you know Mahomes and and Andy and yeah. the enemy got their mojo going. They could score forty one. They, they could were, score. Oh, well, and then day. here's the other the other element too, is you know the one thing I I love about Spags when he plays Brady he doesn't like bow down. You see he he puts people at the line of scrimmage. He makes Brady think. 
You know, how many times last night did you hear Brian Red, Red Giant, Red Giant? Because he's, you know, you know, Mike 54, Linda, Linda, Rita, Rita. He's changing things because Spag challenges him. There's a reason Spags has beat him in a Super Bowl. And hey, beat him with the Chiefs too. They've given them some issues. You know, but that's where, you know, I think they they have a good balance of like, hey, we're crowding the line of scrimmage. We're giving you the pass. Like, oh, we drop out. Hey, we're crowding the line of scrimmage. We're probably going to drop out again. Oh, we blitzed somebody you didn't expect. And I thought that was a good job by him, just you know, keeping them off kilter a little bit as well. Um, but but I, I I still think I think my overall thing is I'm not panicked by the Bucks. You know, they they ran into a team that was ready to go last night, pissed off. I had Super Bowl hangover from two years ago. That's still in their mind. I, I mean, Kelsey and Mahomes, the leaders of the team, they were there. So was Chris Jones and Frank Clark. They don't forget that moment. You know, so I think they really got their A game there going last night. Yeah. And I think the Bucks are still a team that's kind of still finding their way a little bit as far as how they want to play as a complete team. And – you know, trying to play this more balanced approach on offense, and we'll see if they can keep it going. I don't know. Maybe you go for it for a few more weeks. If they feel like it doesn't work, maybe you open it back up to the pass game, but mm. I, I don't think you do that quite yet. I think you stay the, stay with the plan. I think for the Chiefs, too, and, and Pete will like this, I think yeah. we've finally gotten to the point where we don't have to mention anymore how will they survive without Tyreek Hill. I think now week, going into week five. You think? You think, the though? Tyreek Hill, I don't know, right? I, I don't. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you can't listen to a breakdown of the Chiefs and them not bring that up on TV. I know, that's what I'm saying. But I think maybe it's dead now. Now Maybe it's dead. I hope so. You know, it should be. And again, I think last night shows a lot lot too, a little bit again. The way they spread the ball around, it's hard, other than Kelsey, it's hard to figure, you know, who they're going against. And, you know, I hear people say like, well, you just got to double Kelsey. It's a very hard double. It's a very hard double with the way they move him around, his ability to run routes. So they give him freedom in their backyard. Football. But, but, but when you double Kelsey, you're going to then give the looks that they want to throw down the field. And I know there's no Tyreek there, mm-hmm. but McColl and Valdez Scantling can still, Hardman can go in yeah. that group there to Watson. Where, we saw and against Watson, the Chargers, right. Yeah. And Sky Moore. And they're still going to be able to scare you that way. So that's where, you know, they got you in a bind right now. And yes, they're the number four offense in football. Mm-hmm. So they're doing okay with Tyreek. Thanks for watching, homies. Hit subscribe to see all my unbuttoned videos. You get to see me, Ahmed Fareed, all the big player breakdowns, game breakdowns, player interviews, and my film analysis. So please subscribe. Chris Sims Unbuttoned. Peace out.